Hey guys, YouTube, Mochismo Eugene, it's Monday, beautiful out, uh, that song was Grow from uh, Gloria Tales, uh, actually it says Out of Control, title says Grow, her name is Gloria Tales, G-R, oh, sorry, G-L-O-R-I-A, Gloria Tales, capital T, small letter e l l s i've never heard of her so just good vibes for the monday morning before i uh start um this very short video i always prepare to some degree in making a video but this is something that's been pressing on my heart and i've spoken about it before but from my day-to-day -day living and going out and different things and just observing uh, this very prevalent issue I want to just I want to I want to compound on what I said before there won't be any apologies for this video uh, we have a saying if it don't apply let it fly okay getting into this video the title of this is gonna be uh, the narcs dressed apart just to tear you apart Narcs dressed the part to tell you apart. Now, I've spoken about nurses or narcissists in the medical field, and I'm going to compound on that one, two, three punch. And I may talk about it many, many more times after today, and I'm sure I will. Because the reason why I want to talk about this more and more and more, and today specifically because... Pressing on my heart, I see so many individuals that I know from observing are malignant, somatic, psychotic narcissists. Predominantly in the medical field, females. That's what I said, predominantly females is what I'm specifying in the medical field as nurses. And I'm going to tell you, I've told you before, they'll dress provocative. They'll dress with scrubs uh, on that are two sizes too small. We call them butt cutters back home. And, you know, if you're a plus size girl, uh, it's, you know, there's there's few things that you can wear that don't kind of you know, uh, stretch the imagination. But I love the curves, you know, nothing against big girls or small girls. Uh, this stuff is uh, appealing to some degree, but you know, we're talking about as it pertains to the medical field. These are the things they do to draw all the extra attention to themselves. And thereby, it causes us not to focus on what they're really there to do for the people, the patient. And uh, I need to talk about this because if you're not careful, your parents, your children, your siblings are coming of age. And some of them are already probably in a position where they may have health issues, uh, which is a part of life not even just growing old but you know you may have children or siblings that were born with some uh, type of issues medical issues where they have to see a doctor a nurse all the time some of them have to have all the around the clock care uh, we must recognize that these people we entrust to take the best care of our family members and loved ones are going to do so but in in just perceiving and believing that they're going to do the best they possibly can to take care of your your people that's wishful thinking don't do yourself like that don't do that person that is counting on you to be the eyes and ears of these medical providers and these nurses to care for your your uh, your siblings, loved ones, and friends. 
because these people are very good at having what you call bedside uh, bedside manners. They say all the things that sound good to the ear. But they don't have a heart, a heart interest in the patient. We're talking narcissist. Let's talk narcissist in nursing. Narcissist in nursing. I could talk about doctors another time, but we're talking about the nurses and specifically nurses assistants. Because I want to believe nurses, if I had to really, really guess, because I was married to a nurse, my first wife was an RN. Uh, my second wife was a speech pathologist. But uh, so these people who educate themselves to a strong degree to get to that level, there are uh, there is a significant amount of them that really are there for the patients. I can I can say that from a casual observant uh, point of view too, because uh, a nurse really got it. She got to put it in. She got to give it up. Uh, it's just so much going on within that spectrum in that that circle. Whereas the nurses have to be on top of their game. There are a few narcissists that are RNs and maybe LPNs too. But we're talking about nurses assistants, nurses aides. This is what we're talking about. These people who do little and expect a lot. They go into these jobs expecting the patient to take care of themselves. What an atrocious, pathetic, disturbing state of affairs. And we're in a world in a time where if you dare emphasize or call anybody on anything at a workplace, the employer knows the policy better than the employer. The employee knows it better than the employer. And it's almost like a tenant that you can't get out of your residence or your rental uh, apartment. This is how the narcissist is turning the tables on healthy, well-meaning people. They're using <clears throat> every angle, every amount of leverage. They study how to gain leverage on people that are innocent, well-meaning In all capacities, any capacity you can name. But for this video, we're just specifically talking about nurses, nurse, pa nurse uh, practitioners. Well, yeah, nurse practitioners, but specifically on the lower level, nurses aid, nurses assistants. They call them something else now. They don't call them nurses aid. I was thinking nurse, nurse practitioner, but I don't think, I think that's above a nurse's aid. It's been a while since I connected with that, uh, those positions. But my point to you guys is, you know yourself. Next time you're out and about and you see these girls, and, and, and it may be one or two guys in the mix there, but you see these girls, they're going to nursing school and they're getting out of nursing school after six weeks with a certificate or whatnot. And they go in and they, uh, work in these capacities where healthcare is so expensive now to where the administration and the whole policy of healthcare is it, it's so microwave it's so microwave of a process now you're not treated as an individual like back in that day because so many people are claiming to be ill and in the way they are they're spiritually spiritually ill you know, myself included, we're spiritually ill. And instead of running to God, we would just assume, uh, say, oh, you know, I'm hurting, oh, I'm complaining, oh, I can't, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Because we resist that small voice inside of us saying, you know, hey, maybe I need to pray. Maybe I need to ask God to help me. I haven't tried that. 
that pride won't let us do that. So we just continue to, we know healthcare is going to go in and they're going to do something. Give us an antidote. Give us some pills. They gave me some Oxycontins after my knee surgery. I paid for them, but you know what? Haven't thrown them away yet, but that's definitely where they're going. I just have to dispose of them properly. Uh, I don't want to flush them. I don't know. I'll figure it out. So they gave me ibuprofen, 500 milligrams. Those I have taken, but I actually, hold on one second. I'm going to get it. I'm not promoting this product, but I had heard it on infomercial, and I don't buy into infomercials like that. But it was just, I listened to it uh, between YouTube commercials, and um, I was actually, you know, I was grasping what they were saying, and uh, I, I gave it a shot. This is uh, called tam uh, Turmeric, and this is one of many brands out there. Uh, I was actually going in search of, it starts with a C, but it has this in it. And so after just long lengthy stay at Walmart, I settled on this because it's 500 milligrams. And it says, uh, if you can see that, it says high, say ultra high absorption. So that's what I wanted. So it, it, it's, they're in the form of gummies. So I like gummy bears. And it says they're gluten-free, vegan, and no artificial colors. So that's the stuff I kind of go for too. And you take two of these a day, uh, preferably with a meal. And it's an anti-inflammatory dietary supplement. So it's supposed to... Uh, support healthy inflammation response associated with physical overexertion and it says it's not what you take rather what you absorb that matters and it's manufactured in Australia and Australia and packaged in the USA hmm Australia mate so there you go medical field you know self um, preservation starts with you uh, with Google now you can pretty much Google whatever your symptoms are and people are like oh you know I had a buddy say oh man Google don't know everything Google knows way more than I know and I'll trust Google rather than the average person before the average person can sell me on anything because if people who say that they don't realize they say Google don't know everything so if I'm googling something and it tells me something and you say, oh, okay, no, I can tell you blah, 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 blah. You're telling me what Google told me. And who put the input in Google? A oh, man. You see how people can kind of like, they can massage you and make you think. It's the same pig with different lipstick. Uh, I just think about empaths. We, we hear what a person is saying, but the person who's saying it don't realize what they're saying. You don't want me to trust Google, but you'll trust mainstream media. When you see the news, you'll run and tell that, not even knowing where that's vetted, where, where the sources were vetted at. And we all do that. So you have to choose how and when you want to accept information. Just like this is what I'm this is what I'm talking about with the nurses. You have to be aware because your your parents and loved ones and friends are coming of age. Uh, let's say your mother and your father, you're considering putting them into uh, 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 not an independent living, uh, but like uh, people call it elderly, elderly home, old folks home. I don't know why they call it that, but that's, that's what I'm talking about. And you put your family members in there and you figure your excuse is, oh, we can't uh, do it. It's just became too much. It's overwhelming. Okay, I get that. First of all, I want you to really, really, truly sit down and reflect, introspect, and say, is this going to be hard or harder than put
putting her in a home? Is it making it easy for you? Because you don't have to give up a whole bunch of your life in respect to all the things that you really deep down inside don't have to do. And I'm not trying to run a guilt trip as much as I'm trying to run a reality trip on you. We all got to make that decision for ourselves. I've always said I would never put my mother in a home. Uh, I would have him, worst case scenario, come into my home and take care of my mom. And that's, you know, that is at the very, at very best, that's, that's probably what would happen. I mean, if she would come to a point where she can't take care of herself before I do. I'm not, that's not an option. You know, I have two sisters. I'm the only man child left. My father passed, my brother passed in 06. And, um, of course I have my four kids. My twins were 13, boy and a girl, my son and my daughter from my first marriage that don't live with me. They're in their twenties. They have their lives. I would not dare contemplate putting my mom in a home. My mom lives in Alabama by herself now, but uh, I've always asked her to come up here and live with me. And uh, you may say, go back home because it's, most of your family is there. I've lived there most of my life. I'm not crazy for upstate New York, especially the winters, but we got winters in Alabama. Uh, I tell people, uh, I don't want to have to deal with the rattlesnakes or anything like that. Then I come to upstate New York and I'm dealing with human rattlesnakes. Go figure. But I'm um, getting off the beaten path. The nursing industry is what I'm talking about. We have to, or the medical industry, we have to be a little more savvy about how we approach this, how we allow people to take care of us and take care of our family members and loved ones. Next doctor's visit, when you go in there, resist the temptation of getting all giddy because I know it's a coping skill or coping mechanism with some of us. We go in the hospitals and say, we're gonna get a shot or a needle. Uh, some people get nervous and they get like super giddy, super silly. Uh, me, myself, when I go into medical uh, environments, I start, you know, I tell jokes. Um, just because people are so mechanical and so robotic, you know? So I just kind of do, I guess, that to lighten, that, lighten the mood. But in doing that, am I really focused on what I'm dealing with? What's in front of me? Who's in front of me? I told you about how uh, doctors and nurses, they tag team gaslight you a lot of time. And there's a, a word for this in the medical industry how they uh, doctors will downplay when they ask you what your symptoms are, blah, blah, blah. They'll downplay the significance of your pain and they'll make you feel like it's your fault for not only feeling the way you do, but having the, the situation you have. I, I wish I knew the name of what it was. It's a, it's, it's a term that's running around in the medical industry. And what that does is causes the patient to back off when you're actually knocking on the door of the doctor's heart saying, hey, you know, doctor, I need you to look deep inside of this situation for me. They'll just, they'll shrug it off. They'll deflect it. Many doctors have misdiagnosed people. And, and, and it's, it's, it's a situation where, you know, they signed up for this to be doctors. When a pilot crashed a plane, is everybody over there patting them on the back? Oh, you did the best you could. Don't be so hard on yourself. They go to school because they're an elite group of people, doctors, pilots. They do things that most people can't do. And the reason why they do it, because most people can't do it, it, took, it takes an extensive amount of training. They can't get nervous like most of us do under pressure. It's not even, a, it's not, it's not, it's not a question. So, uh, I guess my point is being emphasized more and more. As you listen to what I'm saying, you can go uh, many, many different directions with this. In any facet of life, we have to deal with these narcissists. But I wanted to emphasize on the medical field. And I'll probably emphasize on it again because, like I say, this is heavy on my heart. Because every time I look around, I see people running around here with scrubs on. No modesty. Ratchet. Pathetic. Toxic. 
no manners. And I know nurses, they'll come off of a cigarette break and go right in there and start dealing with the patient, smelling like cigarette smoke. And any of you here nurses, you smoke, you know, I'm not, I'm not judging you for being a smoker, but you know, think about what you're doing. Think about what you're doing. You know, uh, people might think because you're a smoker, you say, well, okay, I smoked it outside. Uh, that's not a big deal. I used to be a smoker. People can smell that. It's 20 something years since I smoked a cigarette. And I'm here to tell you, when a person smokes, some people, you can't even really smell it on them. I don't know how they do it, but there are some of us that smoke. It oozes all out of us. It's like the cigarette ashtray is standing right next to us. Let's just be mindful about who we are and what we are when it pertains to caregiving. I guess that's what my big point is. And we definitely have to watch out for the narcissist in this capacity because they don't care for you, your loved ones, your friends, the way you think they do. They dress the part to tear you apart. They'll come home and talk about everything that happened at their job. That's a violation of the HEPA law. Who's, who's overseeing this? Where's the oversight for that? Who's the big brother for that? They'll go on Facebook or Twitter or whatever and they'll post pictures at their job. At my job, you are not even allowed to take pictures of the facility, let alone upload them to, uh, to Facebook. Because it's the government, uh, we deal with government contracts. Are there people that are doing it? I'm sure there are. Narcissists don't care about rules. They don't care. Do I, do I follow all the rules in life? No, I don't. But my principal point is I abide by laws and rules and regulations as best I can, as much as I can. I don't run towards violating rules. <laughs> Narcissists don't have rules. I played the music before I went into this video because I wanted you guys to kind of counterbalance the subject matter here with the song that I played before I came in. We have to focus in on this information on a daily. But after that, go on and live your life. Enjoy your Monday. Bless.